her stepfather was this pretty horrible individual, and she had a very difficult time in his time. Um, he died when Pat was in her teens, and that's about the time that my father came on the scene. But um, recently, I I discovered the mom's love letters to dad, and being 65, I was finally old enough to read them. Um, <laughs> and, and in that, it, part, it talked a lot about Pat's life, and, and she, she she had a lot of friends, a lot of boyfriends, and, and she was a party animal. So she she went out. She saw Frank Sinatra at the Golden Gate Theater, um, and she really was had a good time. She went to work for uh, the railroad at Southern Pacific. All four of mom and my other sister Jackie and I, we all worked at the railroad. Um, and that's where she met Aunt Doris, who we refer to Aunt Doris. And because they became like soul sisters. I mean, they were inseparable for all of their lives. And the story goes that um, they, were at, they were out at a bar one night dancing and, and Jim and, and Uncle Jim and Roy came in and they saw these two babes at the bar and they <laughs> flipped a coin as to see who was gonna dance with who. And so I could just as easily is, Becky, Jeannie, Mike, and Pat could have easily been my nieces and nephews. <laughs> 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 So, and, it, and it turned out, so early marriage. So um, they got, they eloped to, to Reno. Um, again, I wasn't around, so I, I don't know a lot. It's like my aunt and uncle were their witnesses. Um, but they lived in Fresno, they moved to Fresno. And while they were away on their honeymoon, um, somebody snuck into their house and took all the labels off of their canned goods. So it sounds an awful lot like an Aunt Doris and Uncle Jim. <laughs> So for the first year of their marriage, it's like they wouldn't, so Pat said they, like, they would have, you didn't know if you were going to have corn and peas, or tuna with beans, or like, <laughs> and, it was like, so, and, and having kids, they, Doris, Doris and, and Pat wanted to have kids, it's, Doris was more successful in the beginning, is, and Pat had several miscarriages, and then finally Donna came on the scene, so, and Donna starts a chain reaction. So there's a too much information story. So Donna's born in Fresno. Mom's packing to get on the train. She looks on her diaphragm and says, I don't need this. I'm just going by myself. So she goes down to Fresno. Dad comes down and surprises her. And here I am. <laughs> so so it's, if anybody has any problems with me all my life, it's Donna's fault. So <laughs> So, and then it gets, it gets worse, it's like, so then when I'm born, Pat takes the train up to, up to San Francisco. Same logic, Leroy's born, right, nine months later. Almost to the day, Donna, me, and Leroy are like nine months apart. So, and then the joke mom is told is like, after that I never left home without it. So, it's like, <laughs> <laughs> so. So what's it like having a sister that's 28 years older than you? Um, there's many chapters. She was my mother, she was my sister, and she was my best friend. Um, Don, the four of Don, Donna taught me how to share. She would beat the shit out of me because you know, <laughs> if I didn't share things with her. So she was my she was instrumental in preventing me to become a monstrous only child. Um, Leroy came along and he got all my hand-me-downs for Leroy. So, and I remember I had to go to therapy for many years because there was one Christmas I remember where Leroy got his own new underwear and, he's, and he was crying because it was like the best gift <laughs> that we got in his life. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, was it that bad? That's like, kind of so, but um, yes. Yeah. He, um, Jackie came along and we had uh, the hippy dippy days, I call them. And um, my, my retirement plan is I have all these stories on Jackie so her kids have, she has to bribe, pay me money so I don't like tell the stories. <laughs> like, the, um, but we, we had fun and then Don came along and 
And Don's way at the way into the train. And it's like, and I think Don and I, it really wasn't until recently, like going through the sobriety thing and and the adventure with his mom that we became close. So that's we really yes, think, we, we, yeah, we, we we bonded there. But it's um and the Uncle Joe room. So this is interesting because they're all my age. I mean I'm you know, I'm in the middle of it and sometimes I put on the Uncle Joe hat and I make these pronouncements and they all listen. <laughs> it's like and I turn to Alex and I say, God damn, like, they listen to me. It's like, and it's, it's interesting. It's an interesting hat. I try not to wear that hat too often, but sometimes it's there. So the um, Pat's work career, she worked over 25 years at Modesto Junior College. She was assistant to the registrar. She reviewed transcripts. She counseled thousands of students. And I mean, I, who knows how many lives she touched is to telling them what direction to go, what they needed to graduate, you know, and just, she changed lives. She was president of, the, of her union for two years during a very contentious union fight. And um, yeah. And then, and then in the mid 70s, I came out. So, and for the record is, Leroy came out, like I had nothing to do with that, but <laughs> <laughs> he did his own research. So. <laughs> but in the, in the, so in the mid 70s, I came out, and I remember my first visit with Alex to the house, and she showed us, she, she gave us the room with the twin beds, and she remarked to my sister, she goes, what they do when they close the door, I don't want to know. <laughs> and so, but I knew that Alex was accepted in the family when um, a few visits later, she gave us the room with the double bed. So it was like, so we progressed. Um, about this time, we began transitioning to friends, as, to, as from, I'd say, the mother-sister role to being friends. We had the great mom adventure, I call it. Um, my mom was declining, and Pat decided at one point, um, she, her mom had the house in San Francisco, and she couldn't handle it anymore. So Pat came up with the idea of moving my mom in to live with her. And my other sister, Jackie, and I knew that was a bad idea. And it was mom, as soon as she got, like, she had much to care of her, and she got healthy and strong again. And my mom took over the house. And Pat describes it as that was the closest she ever got to um, a divorce with Roy. It was, it was um, mom took over, as mom did. And, and it lasted about six months. And poor Roy. I mean, Roy was like an angel. I mean, he was like, he was an incredible drug on all for me. He had the patience to take mom the longest drugs, sit there for an hour while she like, went from one end of the store to the other, and I could handle it. But it was like, Roy was just that magnificent spirit. And the, um, we, uh, when it was, we played good cop, bad cop. That was like, I mean, Pat and I both had turns of the barrel where mom wouldn't talk to us or you know, but we were a team, and that's, I think, that's when we really got close. And then I decided, in, mom was losing it mentally, but about that time I decided to get sober. This is mid-90s. And this is a, Here's the tough part because it's mm, she was instrumental in helping me work the steps. I went, I did the 12 steps in AA, and Pat was incredible. I remember sitting at the bench in Greg's at Bark, and she was helping me as I was figuring out my amends, going, No, this is yours, this isn't yours. And it was, she was, she just changed my life at that point. After the, in their last years, Roy and her traveled everywhere. I mean, I think they used the Marine Corps as an excuse, the Marine Corps reunions as an excuse to see the nation. I mean, they would find one and they would just, they, they once in a while they would fly, but a lot of times they spent a lot of time in the car. But it was great because they never had the chance to see the country. And then, you know, and, and my sister's gambling and she would, 
Alex and I one time, we took her to see Leroy, Leroy and Patrick, and coming back, we decided to stop at Boomtown, and it was not a pretty sight. It was not, <laughs> not a pretty sight of Pat. She would not leave that machine. We were getting, we're leaving, we're leaving. And she said, no, no, I'm, I'm not. <laughs> and it was, it was a long day. So her house was always a house of love. I mean, I could show up, I, mean, I went to college at UCLA and I would show up with three friends going back to San Francisco at dinner time and she would feed us. I mean, it was, it was just, I mean, she always accepted everybody that I brought around, she brought into the house and, and she was just incredible that way. Um, the other, the other, what I want to ask you is um, about, five, about six years ago now I started doing fundraising walks for my um, for my godson Justin at that. And during those walks, because he was involved with human training, is people would come up to me and tell me their version of Justin. And so I asked you to, because I only have my version from your sister, so I asked you to share your version. So, I mean, either do it here, do go to the legacy site and write it, or send an email to one of the kids, but I would love to hear the stories of like, 